conspiracy theories surrounding the death of Adolf Hitler are nothing new. But a book just published claims, in this book here, Grey Wolf, um, in fact claims that Hitler fled from his Berlin bunker in April 1945 and lived in Argentina where he died in 1962 following a massive stroke. The book, Grey Wolf, records in remarkable detail not only Hitler's alleged escape from Germany with his wife Eva Braun, but also his life in Argentina, where he's said to have lived in an isolated German-dominated co colony in Patagonia. The co-author of the book is the respected British journalist Gerard Williams. He's with me right now. Gerard, welcome. Thank um, you. The basic thing we're thinking about is that everybody who's uh, believed the official story believes that Hitler and Eva Braun uh, died in the bunker in 1945, and that was it. But you say no. So, David, it, it, you know, I, as, you, as you say, I've been a journalist for a very long time. I've been amazed what we've discovered from contemporary reports, from um, decent, serious journalists. The report from 1947 of the pilots who flew them out from a Warsaw court. Incredibly detailed testimony of where he landed, where he picked them up, and how he flew them out to Tonda in Denmark. There are so many things that were published and seem to have been ignored over the years. Um, like what? what well, what's instance, the best evidence for, for instance, your story that, that's been ignored? The pilot who flew them out in the Warsaw Court, he was sent away for psychiatric testing for six months by the judge, who thought he was completely mad. Uh, he was accused of being a member of the SS, which he was. Six months later, he came back, he was declared completely sane, and the judge let his testimony come onto the record. We have the evidence of a young SS officer who was in Tonda in Denmark as part of a medical evac flight who saw Hitler and Eva on the ground there at the same time. We then have witness after witness in Argentina who saw him, and the interesting thing is they didn't all say we saw him in 1952 in Buenos Aires, in Cordoba, in Mar del Plata. There are specific times and dates and none of them cross over. Um, these witnesses didn't have to say what no, they said. But there's no evidence, no pictures of, of Hitler I believe that in there Argentina. Are, I believe that there are pictures of Hitler in Argentina and as part of the ongoing um, research into this book, which is, this isn't a complete um, story. I wish it was. I wish we'd found the pictures. I wish we'd found a grave if it exists. What we've done is present everything that we have found, and I think it builds a compelling, a compelling picture of his um, survival in Argentina post-war. And he lived in this German-dominated community. <laughs> Within Did Patagonia, which is, you know, the bottom part of Chile and Argentina, it was pretty much the only colony the Germans didn't lose after the First World War. Except it wasn't a colony, it was a colony within two sovereign states. It's amazingly Bavarian when you go down there. And so many people we know did escape and live down there. We're talking about Adolf Eichmann, Joseph Mengele, and we also believe that Martin Bormann and Adolf Hitler were there at the same time. But we don't have film of that either, though, do we? We don't have film of it, Sir David, but the problem with this story, and we heard this morning uh, from a report in The Scotsman that the Russians are actually going to release all the files, finally. We don't have evidence, but there is no evidence to Hitler dying in the bunker. Right. Why? How do you say that? We all think we, all think we know that they died in the bunker. How was it not them? Well, I think that you can hear on, there's a BBC reporter on site at the time, Thomas Cadet, who's embedded with the Soviet forces. He says that the Russians were handed over six doubles of Hitler, six lookalikes, and none of them were Hitler. Um, Major Nicotine, who ran the NKVD, the Russian security uh, police operation in the military at that stage, said they'd found no Hitler. Marshal Zhukov, who was the commander-in-chief of the Russian army in Berlin at the time, said they didn't find Hitler. Stalin said he escaped to Spain or Argentina. It's only later that these reports of a body being found or two bodies being found come to light. But the people who were there that day when the Russians arrived, they saw Goebbels's mangled and burnt body in the garden. They didn't see Hitler or Eva Brown. Now, the people who said that they saw the bodies being take up, taken up out of the bunker, I think they probably did see bodies being taken up out of the bunker. The crucial point here is it wasn't Adolf Hitler. Who was it? We believe it's a man called Gustav Weber or Gustav Weyler, depending on who you, um, who you go with in it. We've had it proved by the senior facial recognition expert who works at the Metropolitan Police in London here, Professor Alf Linney, that the final pictures of Adolf Hitler, which everybody knows of him with the Hitler Youth on March the 20th, 1945, not his birthday, are definitely not of that of Adolf Hitler. They've been cross-checked and checked, and this is a double. 
Hitler used doubles all the time, so did Stalin. I think the most famous double in World War II was Montgomery, and there was a film made of it which we'll both remember, I was Monty Stubble, yeah. which convinced the Germans that we were doing something else before D-Day. It's those doubles, I believe, that were murdered in the bunker by Gestapo Muller, the head of the SS police, and under the instructions of Martin Bormann. So they were both, both cold-bloodedly killed yes. in order that they could be trotted out as Hitler and Eva Braun. The interesting thing is nobody ever saw the bodies' faces, so they were covered with a blanket when they were taken upstairs. But I don't think that cold-blooded murder is something we can put past the Nazis. I mean, they, they cold-bloodedly murdered almost seven million people, industrially murdered um, six million of Europe's Jews. I mean, these were the worst murdering criminal gang in history. Do you have this gang and so on? Do you have any evidence of where Hitler's body is? What, have, have you found it? Have you nearly found it? Where is it? I think that it, and this is, this is speculation, so it's not something that we've gone into in detail in the book. I think that Bormann would probably have had the body cremated and the ashes scattered so that there was no possibility of it being used as a Nazi shrine. They need to hide this story completely, basically to protect all the money and treasures that they stole with them and are still out there in the capital markets today. And is there unused piles of money left in Argentina by, by Nazis who've died in Argentina? I think a huge amount of it was invested and a huge amount of it was invested probably back into West Germany, into what became known as the West German economic miracle. Yeah. Um, and I think that that money is now present in the shareholdings of major corporations all around the world. Almost a third of the treasures they looted from Europe are still not accounted for. Some of them may well be in Russia, we don't know, because there's still a huge veil of secrecy about the great patriotic war in Russia. But I believe that in a great many of those treasures probably exist in the, um, in the mansions, in the Andes of former Nazis and their children who are now you know, in their 50s and 60s. Thank you very much, and Gerard. That's all for this week. Uh, my thanks to all of my guests, Gerard, and everybody else. Do join me again in seven days' time for another Pack Frost Over the World.